Hello and welcome to the data sufficiency video for the GMAT. Data sufficiency is a unique type of questions that you get only on the GMAT and not on the related tests like the GRE, the LSAT, the SAT or whatever. And uh, most of the tutors do not know how to deal with these questions effectively and accurately. And the reason for that is only somebody who's taken the G GMAT and scored very high in it will know how to tackle the, the data sufficiency questions. All right, so uh, let's look at uh, a couple of examples. But before we do that, here are the instructions. You get five choices. You choose choice A if the question can be answered with the help of statement 1 alone but not statement 2. Choice B where statement 2 alone is sufficient but not statement 1 alone. Choice C is when you need both statements and choice D is each alone is sufficient. Choice E is if the question cannot be answered even with the help of both the statements. So it's important to know which choice represents what answer because the last thing you want to do is after cracking a question, a difficult one at that, you get the uh, you get the answer wrong because you took you chose the wrong choice. So let's look at the first question. Most of the questions we are going to discuss in this section are medium to high difficulty level. So the first question is if the selling price were to be increased by 10%, the sales would reduce by 5%. What ratio would the profits change? Now the key thing in data sufficiency is that you do not need to solve the whole question. You just need to determine whether statement 1 and 2 or their combinations are sufficient to answer the question being asked or not and so you might need to do partial calculation but once you're sure which statements are required to answer the question you do not need to go any further thereby saving on a valuable time on the GBAT. So this question is uh, selling price goes up by 10% sales reduced by 5% what is the ratio of change in the profits? If you've done these kind of questions before, you might think that you know, statement A is cost price is constant and B is cost price increased by 10%. So it should be either D, which means either of the statements independently are sufficient or E, and none, both together are not. Because these statement 1 is really equivalent to statement 2 as far as profit and loss is concerned. So that is something you might think to be the answers as a quick initial evaluation. However, let's look at this one a little more closely. So let's see what the profit is before this change happens. So profit is equal to selling price minus cost price multiplied by the number of units which is uh, let's say S for sales. So this is my initial profit. My selling price minus my cost price multiplied by my total sales. Now this is sales with an S. Now after I make the changes my new profit, let me say profit star, profit um, with, a, with a symbol what happens to my selling price? My selling price goes up by 10%. So if my initial selling price was SP, my new selling price would be 1.1 into SP, 1.1, 10%. So this would be 1.1 SP. What would be my cost price? Let's look at only the uh, first statements. The cost price remains constant. So this becomes CP itself. Nothing changes as far as CP is concerned. And my sales re 
deduce by 5% which means instead of S it becomes 0 0.95 S so this is my new profit so if I, I have to find in what ratio would the profit change I need to really divide these two numbers and then come to the answer so let me see old profit divided by new profit is equal to SP minus CP into S divided by 1.1 SP minus CP into 0 0.95 S now here it is now in this equation can you really cancel out anything yes you can cancel out S and then what remains uh, you get in the numerator SP minus CP and in the denominator 1.1 SP minus CP so there are still unknowns SP and CP are not known so you can't really get the value of old profit divided by new profit the ratio so statement 1 alone is not sufficient to give you the answer now let's look at statement 2 alone so the ratio of the old profit to the new profit would become the old one remains as it is so SP minus CP into sales divided by SP the new SP is into 1.1 minus what happens to CP cost price increased by 10% so this would become 1.1 the previous CP 1.1 CP multiplied by I'll just write the multiplication here for clarity on the screen so multiplied by 0 0.95 s now let's see if we can simplify this so s and s cancels and what you get is sp minus cp divided by let me take this 1.1 out 1.1 SP minus CP into 0 0.95 and that's it these two get cancelled and you can get a ratio now so a very misleading question and easy to go wrong especially if you're trying to solve it using brute guesswork because of lack of time or whatever reason so we find that statement one alone is not sufficient but statement two alone is sufficient so the answer is B so let's look at the official explanation and here it is statement two alone is sufficient and the answer is B the next question is the distance from office to home less than the distance from cinema hall to home so let's say this is my home this is my office and this is my cinema hall statement one is the time taken to travel from home to office so home to office that is this distance is as much as the time taken from home to cinema hall both distances being covered without stopping so these two are equals in terms of time 
time taken is the same and the second statement is the road from the cinema hall to home is bad and speed reduces as compared to that on the road from home to office uh, that's interesting okay so let's consider uh, statement one alone it says time taken is the same from home to office T and home to cinema T so what does the question ask is the distance from office to home less than the distance from cinema hall to home hmm. if the time taken is the same distance same so probably distance is the same so you can answer the question so you'd probably think statement one alone is sufficient to answer the question however it's always wise to look at statement two as well because that might give you another view of the situation statement one says the time taken is the same however is the speed the same I might be going from home to office on my cycle or walking or train but I might going be going from home to cinema on on a car or whatever else so while the time is the same that does not mean that the speed is the same as well so let's look at statement two the road from the cinema hall to home this one is bad and speed reduces as compared to that on the road from home to office so essentially what the second statement is saying is that that speed from home to cinema is less so if speed is less and the time taken is the same and you have speed equals distance by time that means distance is less as well so with the help of the two statements together you can answer the question however statement one alone is misleading is trying to get you to mark the wrong answer however if you are careful then you will not fall into this kind of a trap so this is the official explanation and pretty much summarizes what we said earlier so let's look at the next question what is the speed of the car the speed of the car is 10 more than that of the motorcycle the motorcycle takes two hours more than the car to cover 100 kilometers if you take statement one alone speed of the car is 10 more than that of the motorcycle you certainly cannot answer the question which is to find the speed of the car statement 2 alone motorcycle takes 2 more hours than car to cover 100 kilometers again no chance of finding the speed of the car based on this however looking at the problem uh, if you take both the statements together it looks likely that you'll be able to get the answer but we can't be sure unless we do at least a little bit of the calculation so let's assume that the speed of the car is X uh, so how much time will the car take to cover 100 kilometers time equals distance by speed so 100 divided by S if S supposing is the speed of the car and how much time would the motorcycle take distance by speed so this would be speed of the car minus 10 so the time taken by car is 100 by s and the time taken by motorcycle is 100 by s minus 10 from the second statement you get that the motorcycle takes two hours more so you can equate these two the time taken by motorcycle is two hours more so if you subtract two then you can create an equation so you have a simple equation with one unknown which is s the speed of the car and you can get the answer if you take both statements together now if you look at the official explanation 
it's similar to what we have done they have equated the speed instead of the time as we did but in either way you'll get the same answer next question looks like an easy one on a given day a boat carries 1500 passengers across the river in 12 hours how many round trips did the boat make okay let's assume the boat goes from here so a is one side of the river and B is the other side so we need to find out how many times did the boat go from A to B and back so let's say our first statement alone says the boat can carry 200 passengers at a time uh, it carried 1500 passengers in all and 200 at a time which means uh, the number of round trips could potentially be this seven and a half potentially you can get the answer from here you think so well this is the maximum capacity of the boat the boat can carry you don't know whether it actually carried 200 passengers at each of the round trip or in one trip it carried only 20 for example so that's the key assumption here that this is the capacity of the boat but we do not know whether the boat always operated at its full capacity during these 12 hours so statement one alone is not sufficient to answer the question let us look at statement two now statement two alone it takes 40 minutes each way that means the round trip is uh, 40 plus 40 80 minutes plus waiting time of 20 which means the total round trip is 100 minutes and if you look at the question it says it carried so many passengers across in 12 hours so if one round trip is 100 minutes how many round trips in 12 into 60 minutes so the answer is 12 into 60 by 80 so you can get the answer using statement 2 alone so let's look at the official explanation which is pretty much the same as what we've discussed so hope you enjoyed this session I will leave you with one problem and you give it a go and see how it goes A and B undertake a work involving digging a ditch alternately important important uh, word for a day each if A can dig a ditch in a days and B in B days will the work get done faster if A begins let us look at the uh, two statements the first one is for a positive integer n n into 1 by a plus 1 by B is equal to 1 is this statement alone sufficient to give the answer well not sure all right let's park this and go to the next one if B is greater than a which basically means that a is faster than B so if a is faster than B then will the work get done faster if a begins instead of if B begins mm, I think so looking at this and without going into too much detail common sense tells you that this alone is sufficient however that is not the right answer so give it a think and in a subsequent video we will discuss the solution thank you